tux and pin tux are all formed by taking folds in fabric. Now, this might be to take out excess fabric, it might be to give more movement, or it could just be a design detail. Knife pleats have straight pleats all facing in the same direction, lapping right over left or left over right. Box pleats have two pleats turned away from each other to form a straight panel in the centre. Inverted pleats have two straight pleats turned towards each other to meet in the centre, and then you have a V opening. Kick pleats are a variation of an inverted pleat, and they may have the underlay section cut from a contrast fabric to add design detail. Lots of patterns have pleats. In fact, you'd be amazed at how often you do pleat something for a garment. This skirt that I'm making throughout this DVD has box pleats. This skirt has pleats at the bottom. This top has knife edge pleats and an inverted pleat in the centre. I'm going to show how to do the three main types of pleats easily. There's knife edge, inverted and box. Let's start with knife edge. I'll show you what the tissue looks like on a pattern such as this that's got the pleats. The pattern piece will have markings which show the fold line and the placement line and you transfer these markings onto the fabric so that when you fold the fabric you can fold them exactly in the right place which means you've got enough fabric to create the piece and get it the right size. But if you're not working with a pattern or indeed you want to add pleats to something else that you're creating I'll show you how to form your own pleats using a nice template made out of card and that card can be a cereal box, nothing special. I've made the card template, it's the width of the finished pleat and on one side I've marked fold line and the other placement line. So I put the template in position and then mark both sides and it's a good idea if you can to mark each side different colours so that you know which is a fold line and which is a placement line. And depending on whether you want the pleats to be crisp all the way down or just loose, you can mark just the top or you can mark down about four, two to four inches down the pleat. I have two pleats marked now, so I take the fold line, which I've done blue, take it to my first placement line, and then I can just pin that in place. And depending on how far down I want that pleat to stay formed, I can pin it further down and keep going to the bottom the same. And then my next pleat's ready. Again, I take the blue line, on my case, of course you use any colour you like, and I fold it to the white. If you don't have different colour chalks, then just use a cross, say, for the fold line, and a little straight line for the placement line. So you'll always know which is which. I'm just going to stitch across the top of the pleats within the seam allowance, just to hold them in place, and then I'm going to press them. The pleat's ready to press, but I don't want it to have marks showing through the pleated fabric from underneath. So I'm going to tuck my template inside the fold, cover it with a press cloth, and then carefully press that pleat in place. Now I would normally use steam at this point, but I'm not because of the noise and the camera. but it's good to use steam to get a nice firm crease on your pleat. And what that's done is it's prevented a nasty show through. And just to show what I mean, I'll do the second pleat without using my card template.
So here you can just see an imprint from the fold from underneath coming through. It's more obvious on lighter weight fabric. So it's a good idea to use that template to stop that happening. There are the pleats ready for the rest of the garment construction. However, if this is a skirt, and many skirts are pleated like this, and you have a little bit of extra weight around your stomach, the best thing to do is actually stitch down the pleats for a few inches so that that area stays flat and you don't have that extra bulk just where you don't need it. To do that is very simple. All we do is put the pleated fabric under the presser foot. Now I'm going to stitch as close to the edge of the fold as I can. And so I'm putting the foot down so that it's not quite covering the whole pleat. And then I'm going to move the needle across as far as it will go. lower it down so I know it's in the right place and then I can just stitch. Now there, here we are doing top stitching. And I'm watching the presser foot to see that it's on that edge just as I want it. So there we have pleats that are top stitched down just for the first sort of three inches just over the bulk of the stomach and then the pleats can then hang free to give you the extra movement that you need in the garment. If you can see here, these pleats on this skirt are nice and crisp. In order to keep them lovely and crisp and well pressed, you can actually use waistbanding, like this folder band, on the back of the pleat area and you iron it in place so that the slotted part is on the fold and then you fold the pleat out and you've got a lovely crisp pleat which will stay crisp always.